your journey or what do you have learned so far in e-commerce, you know, um, that will, I mean, how you started your journey? And, it, you know, I, I would like to know, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so my journey started with, uh, uh, I wanted just a little bit of extra income. So this kind of started as a, as a hobby. Uh, it, I quickly learned that this is a, a viable business opportunity and my background's in public accounting. So I, you had mentioned you came from Deloitte. <laughs> I used to work at KPMG. Um, okay. And so uh, that culture, um, great companies, right? great companies and I learned a ton. Um, however, in terms of lifestyle, wasn't wasn't the best. Really long hours, and so um, you know I've continued to to work and work on this business for the last four years, and it's really starting to become something special. And, and so um, that's kind of the the short story of of my journey. Um, but one thing I've done in the last year that's really helped is is by outsourcing, is by not trying to do everything. You know, I still have a nine to five or uh, the topic or the, the title of our show is firing the man. Um, mm -hmm. and so, you know, typically I dedicate about two hours in the morning to working on the business and then it's off to work. And so, um, that's been a critical thing that I've done. And, you know, I've had a lot of failures there. You know, I've hired a lot of people on Upwork and Fiverr that just haven't quite worked out. And so that's been something that, you know, I thought my keyword research was really good. Uh, until I got some from your tasker and realized that, no, oh, I'm only okay at, at it. So um, that's a little bit about my story. Ken, you want to answer that question? Yeah, sure. So uh, my story is similar to David. You know, I started my business just wanting a, a little bit of side income and really liked it. I liked the journey of building the business and expanding and growing. And before I knew it, I had you know, two physical products brands that were growing rapidly. And, you know, I have a full-time engineering job during the day. And mm. I realized, you know, I, I need help. And, you know, like David mentioned, I, I hired a couple of VAs, the standard VAs, you know, and I, and I, it would take so long for me to try to train them up. And, you know, Omar, I, I, uh, I heard you on a Steve Chu's podcast last year and I thought, I'm going to try that. I'm going to try your tasker. And, you know, I've I have now uh, hired two two full time specialists from your tasker, and and it's you know my business has really scaled and grown, and I I now I have time to to grow my business, like you mentioned earlier, Omar, uh, to work on my business and not in my business. So it's it's been it's been really huge working with uh, your tasker and just bringing uh, you know bringing specialists on board that are already up and trained. And, and like David mentioned, you know, uh, I'm not going to say his name, but you know, my e-com specialist, he said, no, you shouldn't do that. You should do this. And I'm like, I've been doing this for two years. And he showed me, you know, uh, a new, a new way to do something that was way faster. So yeah, uh, a huge benefit to my business. Sure. Let me ask you this question. So uh, there is a lot of discussion going on, especially with the COVID-19 what do you guys see the impact of uh, this COVID-19 or e-commerce? Right now, I, I think that there are people that are ordering things online that have never ordered things online before. And they are realizing how easy it is. You know, one thing that, that got me into e-commerce was hearing my mom say, hey, Alexa, order me laundry detergent. And my mom is not computer savvy at all. And, and so it cut, there was a, an underlying message of, um, you know, there are, it's not just millennials that are ordering things online. And so I think this COVID-19 really creates an opportunity for e-commerce uh, sellers in particular, because oftentimes whatever you want, you don't need that day. It, you know, if you were to traditionally like drive to the store and get it, and if you can wait for two days, it'll show up on your doorstep and it, it saves money, it saves time. And that's ultimately our most, that, that's our biggest asset is our time. And so it is so easy to just point, click, read reviews. And, you know, in terms of the shopping experience, when I go to the store and I see something on the shelf, I don't, I can't talk to other people that have used it. I can't, there's no reviews. Um, but I think that the review system makes e-commerce very unique because it creates some social proof around products, right? I think this looks good. I think the, the pictures look good but here's 200 other people that give it a four or five star review. And so I think it's, it's a better shopping experience. And so I 
although this has created some struggles in my business, I think in the long term, we're going to look back at the COVID-19 outbreak and see this as a giant pivot point in e-commerce for the better. Yeah. So my take on that is uh, twofold. So in the, in the short term, there's going to be a lot of hiccups. You know, there's going to be a lot of bumps in the road. And if you can quickly adjust and adapt and survive, then you're going to, you know, you're going to be, if you're resilient, then you're mm -hmm. going to be fine. Now, and, and not only that, but there are going to be people that go out of business. And what is that? That creates opportunity for the people that stay in business. So my long-term view of the COVID-19 is that what David mentioned, there's more and more people. I mean, you have to shop online now to get something, right? So the more people that go online and shop, uh, they're going to be doing this for a long time, right? This is, this is probably going to drag out for three months, six months, nine months uh, for a really long time. And humans, I believe, are creatures of habit. So once you create a habit of shopping online, you're going to continue that habit. So I think the the, the long term, you know, view of e-commerce is is really really good. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I look into two views. First of all, people who uh, wants to start on e-commerce, okay, uh, what evidence you guys need now? You know, it's it's pretty <laughs> much it's pretty much clear. You know, e-commerce is there and it's going to be there in future whatever your channel you're trying to sell. Secondly, people who are already selling, okay? Uh, I think the important point which um, they need to realize is that they need to start working on diversify their business, okay? Uh, I was I was talking on another show the other day and uh, I, I, I uh, that question came to me and I answered that, you know, uh, diversify in, in the sense that you know, you need to look all those products which you never thought about, you know, based on the current circumstances. Uh, diversify your shipping options. For example, you are, if you are just totally depending on FPA, you know, what happened in the last six weeks, you need to start thinking about FPM, 3PO, you know, have all those options ready. So diversify as much as you can for existing business owners, especially who are selling online. So that is from my side. 